Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. We are joined today back by my friend, Mr. Chris Ruscio. Chris, welcome back on the podcast. Thank you. Uh, very excited to be here again. Yes. Uh, talking yes. about Lars this evening. Again, this is, you can't get any better. <laughs> no, you can't get any better. And and the first one was awesome. We're talking about the gear of Lars Ulrich. Part one was basically his origin, you know, as a young drummer up to um, basically the end of the 80s, which we're going to pick up there and then get some some info from still in the 80s and then move forward. So, uh, Chris, this is going to be we're going to try and get through uh, from where we left off through to the to the, today. I mean, you just saw Metallica not too long ago, so we'll get to that point yeah, um, yeah. as well. So uh, we're going to talk about a couple things kind of in that same era, and then we'll move forward from there. So go ahead and take it away, and we'll. Uh, this will be cool. Okay, so I wanted to make some corrections from our last episode. Uh, you know, you know, I want to keep all the information as, as true as I can. So I believe I said on the Imperial Star and the Superstar, the U.S. Superstar Tour kit, I believe I said he was using Ebony Ambassadors on the, on the Rezo heads. That's actually Ebony Pinstripe. So mm -hmm. I wanted to correct that. Um, I also wanted to talk about the uh, Monsters of Rock snare drum. I believe I said that was a king beat. That's a Mastercraft, so I wanted to correct that. That's a Mastercraft 8056, so I'll correct that. Gotcha. And we also, we talked about the Japan 86 kit, and I remember saying, you know, I don't know what the makeup of the wood is, but I went ahead and researched that, and it's some birch and some cordia mixed. So <laughs> I just wanted to get that information out there and, and correct that so, uh, you know, and uh, so we can keep everything, you know, true. No wrong information. <laughs> no, I appreciate you uh, doing the research, and you were forgiven of your uh, very small mistakes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes. So I want to discuss something uh, pretty pretty neat, um, something I didn't know existed, you know, for many many years till I got my first Superstar kit. So I believe this was part of the Superstar and Imperial Star line. It was something called a shell support. Now, what a shell support is, if you can imagine the uh, two pipes in a cymbal stand, how they extend. Well, shell support, um, it extends, it's got a rubber foot on the bottom, and it's got a threaded rod with a wing nut. So what that does is that goes up through the grommet hole. The wing nut tightens, and you extend it, and you put pressure on the shell. That was mainly done to support those massive, massive uh, power toms. So <laughs> it's just nuts, man. Yeah. I've never, I mean, I've done the power tom episode. I've done, I've never seen that ever, but it, it almost... Again, for people who are like listening and not watching, it almost reminds me of like one of those like things that you extend on your steering wheel. It doesn't really look like that, but just to like <laughs> like, like the a club, bar. yeah, like the it's like the club, yeah, yeah. Or the drum version of the club. <laughs> yeah, and so the grommet hole was right behind the uh, bass drum tom mount, so it kept a lot of pressure on there. Um, yeah, I assume he used them. That was top of the line. That came with the Imperial Stars. It came with the Superstars. Um, and really, after that, they never did it again. Uh, they, they don't have it on the Grand Stars. I don't see mm. it on the Art Stars. So uh, it's something I thought was pretty cool to not yeah. uh, to gloss over. I don't want to gloss over that. That's pretty cool. No, and to state the obvious, it is to support the integrity of the shell yeah. under the massive weight right. of the to power toms. The power toms. And that, that shell is not weak either. So I don't know. Yeah. They must have known something down there at Tama to include them. But uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, interest. So, so really quick, I'll read it. The the description on the photo you sent. With many drummers playing single-headed bass drums, the Tama shell support can perform several functions. It will prevent ovaling of the shell due to tom tom weight, prevent damage in transit, and keep a pillow or other muffler in place. It's cool. Yeah, not a bad idea. You and, know, it's a three for one. <laughs> yeah, and they and they stopped doing that really after yeah. uh, after eighty six when they moved on to Grand Star. You you didn't really see it again. So no. I thought that was pretty cool. And I, like I said, I didn't know about it for many years. Very cool. And yeah, I you get, just kind of look at a catalog and you gloss right over it. Yeah, and I, I have I have a set and they are pretty neat. And uh, and then, like I said, that was it. Tama didn't yeah. didn't really use them again. So yeah. So I wanted to definitely bring that up. I believe, I imagine he would use them. He had the power toms. You know, they were offering that. That was top of the line. I don't see why he wouldn't use it. 
honestly. He's got so, big toms. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder how many of those are floating around right now. <laughs> or if people have it and they just think like, this is just a piece of hardware and they don't know what it goes right. to. Right. I, I didn't know thing. what it was either. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? And then I'm yeah. looking at it. I'm like, oh, that's got to be a shell support. So yeah. it's something, cool. something, something more rare. Yeah. So. Um, All right. What else do we have? Okay. So I want to get into, and I know we spoke about uh, hit the two hi-hats. You know, he had the auxiliary hi-hat on the right and he had his main hi-hat. I did want to mention that he used a clutch. He used a drop clutch. Now, in many magazines and many articles, this was always, you know, this was said to be a DW clutch. Okay. Now, when I was doing my research and I was trying to find this DW clutch, I could never find this thing. I was on DW uh, message boards and Facebook groups, and I'm asking around. And still to this day, nobody has seen this DW clutch. So, mm. you know, I'm I'm talking, you know, I got some guys also on the Facebook and the Instagram, and they said, hey, uh, I see you're not running that clutch. And I'm like, I can't find it. And they're like, you know what? And this guy, uh, Justin, Justin Vincent, good guy, he said, you know what? That's a Canon clutch. That's what he's using. And I that- said- Brand Canon, which is not the most yeah, high end. Right. Wow. Canon percussion. So I'm like, yeah. no, it's a DW, but I'll, I'll hold up an example of it. When you look in the videos, especially like Seattle 89 and uh, Mountain View had some clear pictures, this was the shape. I remember this being the shape and I, I could never find it. I'm like, well, it looks like a Rogers, but it's not a Rogers. And then when he told me it was that Canon, that matches up. So there's some conflicting information out there, but I really think it's the Canon. And I, I wanted huh. to bring that up. If you want to, if you want to um, take a look at the videos too, the, for the people out there watching and listening, this shape matches it. So I, I believe that he's using a Canon clutch up until uh, the load error when he. Now we can see it's definitely a DW. Yeah. Can you explain? I've seen them. I've used them. I think on a few kits back when I worked at like Guitar Center and Sam Ash. What is the purpose of a drop clutch? A drop clutch is so, you know, it, on the fly, you can basically uh, drop the hi-hat to a closed position. When you step on the pedal, it picks it up. It holds it up. Now uh. I now I want to switch to closed real quick. I could tap that with the stick. It'll drop down for me. But when you press the pedal, it catches it and opens it. It picks up wherever you have it set. So you could have it set wow. up at the most minute adjustment, drop it down, pick it up, and do all kinds of neat things. And so he, okay. defi- he definitely did have those on his kit. And after matching it up and, and Justin helping me out there, I believe it to be a cannon clutch. And before we move, up, move on, I wanted to discuss one more pretty cool thing. So Lars always had like um, a stick holder on the right side. For many, many years, it was pretty much, it was the bottom half of a cymbal stand. I would I would describe it as like an old, cheap cymbal stand. I actually, you know, I have one here. You can see it's just like a single brace. See sure. how I have the stick in there? Yeah. Comes out if he needs to use it. Goes back in and it holds it like that. He always kept one on the right side. Up until Black Album. Black Album, Torque Kit, it did change. He pretty much put the clamp on here. And now you hold three sticks. Oh, cool. So that that was a pretty cool thing I wanted to bring up. Yeah, that's interesting. It's almost yeah. like overkill to have, use a whole cymbal stand to carry one stick. Right. But the technology of that that little, like what you always see now, on like what you had, that little kind the of little clamp. Cl- clamp, maybe that didn't exist before that or something like that. Right, I mean, yeah. Um, see, nowadays he uses like a bag and, and he has yeah. something like this, but they make something for it. So back sure. then, especially when Kill 'em All, he probably had something laying around. And he said, well, hey, you know, let me let me put a stick in here. And, and that's pretty much all it is, the cheapest stand you could find. I remember yeah. I remember them describing it. As we said, he, uh, he sweats and spits a lot. They said it was an old, rusty, single-braced, you know, cheap stand that he would hold the stick in. <laughs> so that's one of those uh, deep-dive gear things that uh, gear nerds know about. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So Cool. And then moving along here, so where do we go from there? So we, we talked about the, uh, the Damage Incorporated tour uh, last, last episode, but I wanted to mention something pretty cool. In uh, October 4th, 6th, and 7th of 89, these were the last three shows of the Justice Tour. Um, they were in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Rio de Janeiro. Um, apparently, they couldn't get all his gear down there, so he has this... Uh, it, well, it's, it's a Pearl World Series, but it's, it's a customized kit. It's got flames all over it. <laughs> yeah. If you when you see the picture, you'll see it. it's got flames all over it. Concert toms. Um, it looks to me like all his gear did make it down there. 
except uh, for the shell. So his symbol stands are there, his symbols. And he's got this, uh, I, I probably he probably rented it or something. So I did look into it a little bit, and it's actually like uh, some guy who customizes drums. I think it's called Luthier. Um, all, all this stuff was in Portuguese, so I couldn't really dig too deep into it. Sure. But so it was the four rack toms, the two kick drums. He only had one floor tom, but uh, it's it's a sight to behold. Uh, yeah. All the flames I mean, on it's, there. <laughs> it's cool, but like honestly, that kit. It's funny how that happens, where it lives. The kid is living its life, and then something like this happens, and it becomes a part of history. Yeah, just, you know, you know, the, the three shows, <laughs> yeah. uh, never seen again, and and here we are talking about it. But uh, so it was definitely it was a Pearl World series. When you uh, when you look into it, you could see the old style uh, Pearl Tom mounts. Okay, but but it was customized, and it was like an independent drum shop down there. And yeah. I knew I seen this thing before somewhere. And I did see a photo of uh, Igor Cavalera from uh, Sepultura. He was using it, too, a little bit. Really? And, you know, they're down in Brazil, and that thing is down in Brazil. So just some cool information there I wanted to, you know, kind yeah. of an honorable mention kind of thing. So It's a cool paint job. I mean, it's it's it, it might not be everyone's taste, but, yeah. like, it's clearly, like, a dude who, like, paints hot rods or something like that. Yeah, yeah, like absolutely. That, that's that's what I would describe it as, like an old hot rod flame job. So Yes, exactly. Yeah, so... It's an honorable mention. I wanted to bring it up. Uh, it is. You can see it on YouTube, and there are a few known pictures. But if uh, you know, you type that in. You know, uh, Brazil eighty nine. You'll see it. Not the best quality, but you'll you'll see a couple of videos on it. So cool. So, yeah, something I wanted to bring out there. So very cool. All right. So that's so that's, that's the eighties. Uh, that's damage damage uh, justice tour. We're wrapping yeah. that up. Okay. So there's a there's a couple quick tours in between. Um, so there's a tour in the 90s. I think it's about May May 11th to May 26th. Uh, it's a tour with Dio, Bonham, and I think Warrior Soul. It's a quick tour. So now he's using what, what looks to me to be white Grand Stars. Now, I remember we discussed the, uh, the Garage Days kit, how he was in that ad with the beer and he was standing over a white Grand Star. Yep. It looks to be like he brought that kit back to me. It's a white, it's a white kit. Um, I know it was in the 90s, and they had something called Grand Star 2 at the time. Um, before before we get too deep in it, let me talk about the Grand Star line a little bit, because if you're listening or watching, you could be a little confused. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. confused sometimes to this day about it. So well, first it came out in 86 with something called Crestar. Now, Crestar was uh, short-lived in name only. They changed that to a Grand Star Custom. Now, Grand Star Custom was an eight-ply birch shell, um, lacquered inside and out. It was the more high end. Uh, right underneath of it, they had regular Grand Stars. It had like a cheaper, um, a cheaper badge. It was seven ply and it was wrapped. That went all the way through the 80s. In the 90s, they bought out the Grand Star 2s. The Grand Star 2s were seven ply birch and they were wrapped. They shared all the hardware as the Art Stars. So I believe him to be using Grand Stars from that period. The ad says Grand Star 2. But when you look at it, I think it's Grand Star Custom because we know we like to switch to uh, single lugs, but I'm seeing the same uh, bass drum spurs and the tom mounts on the shell as the Grand Star Custom. Hmm. I don't think he would switch that over. You know what I'm saying? The spurs yeah. and the mounts. I believe it to be a Grand Star. So it's a white Grand Star Custom. At the same size as he used on the on the uh, Damage Justice Tour. He's got the uh, Danish flag. He's got the monkey mounted there. Everything is kind of like still stuck on that Damage Justice Tour. You know, sure. it's got that same feel. Yeah. But ne- we're now we're using we're using the white Grand Star Custom, and we have chrome lugs on it, as can yep. be seen in the pictures. So that that happened for like uh, like two weeks, three weeks. They used that. That was a couple quick shows with Dio, and that's um, before they started recording the Black Album. And you said a lot of, and this kind of answers the question that a lot of people will have in the comments is what happens to these kits after they're done using them? You said a lot of them, they take back to like, they they take back. And now as we start to get into the nineties, we know there's, there's multiple, multiple kits. I mean, we, 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 we used to see two of the art stars on the stage, you know, he he would go between both of them and there's, you know, I remember reading when they got to say in anger, there was like seven kits. There's two kits on the stage. They're sending wow. two up to the next town. They keep a couple for like radio shows or, you know, stuff with Sirius if they have to do something that with Sirius XM. So they yeah. keep like two or three on hand. So there's multiple, multiple kits. But when I talk to Jimmy, which I believe to be accurate, he takes all the stuff back. 
So that's what, that's what I'm thinking, that that Grand Star Custom is the same one in the ads from the, the garage days. And, and it moved up to the ad in the 90s. He's kind of got the same beer in the picture. You know, he's yeah. got the same haircut. and <laughs> <laughs> but, So something that kind of gives it away. Let's keep moving from there. Okay, so now we're getting up to the to the famous kit, the white the white art star. Yeah, maybe, maybe the most famous, if not the second most famous kit in the world. I, I think Mister Mister Peart holds that uh, most <laughs> yeah. famous kit. So um, quickly, the uh, the wherever I may roam uh, tour starts in August first, and they're in Petaluma, California. Uh, kind of before they get going, he's using. He's using that gray Grand Star Custom from the Damage Justice Tour for two shows. There's videos on it, uh, but it's got the Chrome hardware this time. Okay. So that's that's what I see, and then we move then we move into the Art Star era. Yeah, so, and that is what is behind you right now. Is yes, the Art Stars. That's the Art. Like, that's the Art, art Star, Star two. two. Yeah, Art which, Star Two, which look awesome. Yes. Yeah. So for years and years and years, this has been a big big point of debate. And I'm going to clear it up today. They are Art Star 2s. There is no doubt they are Art Star 2s. Um, they do look like Grand Stars because they have the single black lugs. He was always partial to the single lugs, so he had them customized for him. Sure. So they're Art Star 2s. Um, now, the unique thing about this kit is the sizes are 10 by 10. You have a 12 by 11, 14 by 13, 16 by 15. And then the two 18 by 16s. Aside from the floor toms, everything had a two inch difference. The diameter and the depth were all spread two inches apart. And I remember hearing so they could, you know, hear them better in the mix. So they would stand out opposed to having your 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 by 24 bass drums. There was always a debate about the snare on this Art Start 2 kit. I don't know if some bad information got out there, but it was always said to be a white painted bell brass. I I don't believe that to be true. I believe it was the uh, the PM Maple Five Two Six uh, Artwood. Because That's a big I, difference. Yeah, I've never seen ever any any mention of a white painted bell brass, any pictures, any indication. You know, you think yeah. on a, on a kit this popular, something would get out there. Sure. There would be some kind of information. So I think it's just to be just some bad information. I know he used a bell brass in the studio, but I, I really don't think that this is a bell brass because you, you have to remember, too, this this was a retail kit. This was released as retail. And in, in the ad, it was said that he would do it under one condition, that if it was an exact replica of what he used on stage. And it didn't come with a white bell brass. It came with a maple five two six. So, I mean, you know. there's some pictures too where you can see kind of under and mm -hmm. in. It looks wood. It looks like wood to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I really don't believe it to be bell brass I, in the studio. Yeah. yeah, we know it was a Gretsch bell brass snare, but but this this was a maple, an Art Star maple PM. I think five two six power metal snare. That's what I believe that to be. So, um, cool. Beautiful, iconic drums. And then yeah. cymbals, do we change anything with cymbals at that point? Uh, well, the cymbals, that's, that's another thing. Um, they're still the A-series Zildjian, but I'm reading that, and the uh, the research I've done, they're saying that there's a few rock crashes in there. Now, he's always used a medium or a medium-thin crash, and as we got up to like the current day, it's a projection crash. Uh, maybe it is. You know, it's hard to know without getting actually seeing it. You can't really tell from the pictures. 
but we're still using an 18 and a 17 on the left and a 19, 18, and 17 on the right. Uh, some information, like I said, says it's rock crash, but the rest of it is, is medium thin on the other side. Would he run two different kinds like that? I don't know. Yeah. Honestly, honestly, I don't know. Gotcha. So now, No ride, though. We're still no ride. We still don't have a ride. We have a, it looks like a 19 uh, K China boy. And that was probably that was probably the same on the on the uh, damage justice. I might have messed that up too. I believe that was a 19 inch K China okay. as well. Cool. So now this kit came in a couple variations. This white art star. It looks like right after they left the uh, the Phoenix Theater in California, they went on a European kind of like a European leg of their tour. The stands, all the hardware was chrome. Uh, you had the black shell hardware, but all your cymbal stands were chrome. Even on the snare, we could see that the hoops are chrome. So it wasn't fully black yet. So that was one of the variations. It still has a Danish flag on it. It still has the monkey on it. This this is all going to change. But this is kind of like the European variation. Sure. So I remember reading that uh, a gentleman at Tama named Joe Hibbs was in charge of this project. And, you know, when they built this kit, they uh, they said they wanted to bring over the single style grand star lugs to the art star because the art star and i didn't mention that before that's a nine ply maple and it comes with a one piece lug so they wanted to like the damage justice kit they wanted the single lugs so joe was in charge of getting all this ready for the video music awards in 91 and i remember reading he had like 1800 pieces including the symbol stands <laughs> that he had to get uh, powder coated or plated wow so yeah the Video Music Awards, I believe they were in September 91. So they came back quick from Europe. They did the Video Music Awards, and now that kit, everything's black on it. Cymbal stands, all the hoops, nice. all the hardware. So also the uh, the Tama logos on the front Rezo heads, they're a little smaller. You know, if, if, you, if you're, you're watching on YouTube at home, you could see how these logos are a little smaller from the variation when they were in Europe with all the chrome hardware. So that was another change. The uh, The Danish flag is gone now. Yeah. Uh, the monkey is gone now. We'll see him again later down the road, but he's gone now. Um, so after the Video Music Awards, they go back to, uh, they go back on their European leg and we see the chrome variation again with the chrome hardware and the chrome snare hoops. And when we get back, I think it's uh, Peoria, Illinois. I think it was October, I think the end of October 91. Now we see the kit again with the black hardware, and that's it. We don't mm. see the we don't see the early chrome variation anymore. Now yeah. it's from there on, it's all that uh, black cymbal stands, black hoops, black lugs. Um, I mean, the, I mean the clutch was black. So <laughs> it's definitely cooler to have the all black and like just the, the powder coating. I've always loved the powder coated hardware yeah. and stuff like that of any brand. It's always like even as a kid, I most kids who were not drummers like I didn't I didn't know what powder coating the process even was. Right, I right. still didn't really know fully how it works. I just know I want it. And yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I mean, it, it, it was kind of not many people were doing it back then. I, I think, like I said last episode, I think Randy Castillo from Ozzy had a white and black kit, but it was single lug, a single yeah, yeah. lug Tama. So maybe that's also why uh, Lars wanted to split it to the to the single lugs or to the split lugs. I'm sorry. Sure. So the it wasn't one cool, piece. But the, this is just like, and these particular, these lugs look yeah, awesome. They, I mean, they, it's just. They, the shark tooth, they call it. The shark tooth. And it yeah, stands yeah. out on stage. And it's almost like with everything being black. It makes the the actual shell just pop. Everything just pops. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I mean, if you look back there, we got a sixteen by fifteen mounted rack tom. It's a floor <laughs> tom. <laughs> do, do you know how heavy that was? Oh my god! Oh, one, man. one of these days, I got to stick it on the scale fully loaded because the thing is massive. I'd really like to know what it weighs. Yeah. But so, and doing some more research. They'd never made a 16 by 15 until the Art Star 2 and the Grand Star 2 came around. Then, when you look in the catalog, they actually offered that as it's labeled as a rack tom. Now, I don't, I don't know if they thought that somebody would mount it up above. Maybe it was supposed to be like a floor tom on the, a lower mounted tom, but yeah, he did it. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because they would have, you know, you could technically put it on a symbol stand or its own mount on a, you know, like a mount right. off of a symbol stand on the floor. But, but good to Lord, put, it to, is huge. To put it up top, I mean, and that says something about their top mounts, which and that's another thing. So early variation, we have the MTH-50. Let's see if I get in the camera there. Uh, yep. Hex rod here. And we have a hex rod where the Tom goes. And then he switched over to the all black to an MTH 300. We have this uh, sort of round, bigger round pipe, and we have a gnarled kind of just circular rod. And yeah. that, that was the changes with the Tom mounts. But something has to be said for these Tom mounts to hold that giant rack Tom up. I mean, just, yeah. it's just amazing, the quality of the hardware. So yeah, really. <laughs> the Tom yeah, the hardware. Japanese stuff. I mean, this is yeah. kind of why, the, why they came in and uh, sort of killed off some of the 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 legacy brands because yeah. the hardware alone was so much better and, and things were more affordable and and yeah. I mean still to this day even nowadays it still holds up you know like I like I said last time some of the pedals we got some better technology but the hardware I mean there's just there's no debate the symbol yeah. stands it's just amazing stuff so, yeah 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 and and we have um, also I'm sure you probably have a model number or something but the the symbol stands with the weights at the bottom yes yes massive that's interesting so that's huge a, that's a change too uh he's using now um so we went from the Tama Titan to it's now it's called Tama Stilt and the stands he's using particular model number is an HC 104 TB and like you said they're uh, they're just the massive symbol stands they've got the counterweights on them um and his he had them done in black so really, really heavy stuff. Really heavy. Double braced. Now what the stilt was is kind of if you're listening, if you can kind of picture it, where the where the three legs are at the bottom, the tripod, there's there's that pole in the middle. This had a collar where you could slide it up and down and kind of suck the leg up and tilt the cymbal stand in. So that was that was something new too. And uh they ran that for a while and he used that pretty much up all through St. Anger. He used that hardware. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. And I that, didn't notice that. Okay. Yeah, that hardware, that, that's some amazing stuff. Yeah. So that's what I mean, he, is it like, and this is just like kind of looking at it, like, I, I guess it's just to keep, because like now we have cymbal stands that are much lighter. And yeah. Cymbals, cymbals aren't really lighter now. No, Is no. that much, like, the counterweight, is that necessary, you think, to that well, owning see, now, so now what Tommy uses is they're using the Road Pro, and so I do own both, and I find that you know even with the new technology with the same size symbols, my Road Pros are shaking around. They're oh, moving sure. around because you know I don't want to yeah, make yeah, it all yeah. about all about me, but I keep like tape on the rug, so if I ever have to move stuff, I know where it goes. And you know I'll, I'll do I'll play for a couple minutes or a couple hours, and the symbol stand is moved. You know, it's out of the taped yeah. uh, area. With the with the, um, the the stilts and the titans, they don't move okay. at all. You know, so that, that's yeah. the difference I notice with them. And there's like lit literally, like there's there's more on the line when you're playing an arena and this kit and it can't be moving. So right, exactly. That makes that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, it looks like he's got some cool stuff too, like a little cup holder attached to his like yeah. floor tom. <laughs> yeah. So what that is, if you zoom in. It's just like a cup holder. I don't know. I don't know what stores they had back then, but it's kind of a a car cup holder you'd find at Walmart or something today. Yeah, like a and truck it, stop or something. Yeah, and it's cut up and it's got white duct tape on the side of the shell. <laughs> so yeah, and like I said, he's got the um, the stick mount with the uh, the clamp to have three sticks on the other side on the other hi hat stand. He has like a, a bag now to hold the yep. four sticks on that side. Uh, when he had the Titans on the Damage Justice, it was kind of just like a stick resting in the hi-hat legs, you know what I'm yep. saying? Kind of like wedged yep. in the opening, just leaning there. So sure. he's so he's kind of getting, you know, some better uh, equipment there and doing things a little differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is the era of like, looks like we're, we've got spandex pants with white socks spandex pulled up. Pants. I'm glad you said that because <laughs> I got to bring this. You got to think I'm, I'm a nerd, but. Wow. Are are those, the, those are the shoes. Well, th these haven't been used by him. But these are yeah. one of the shoes. Uh, explain, <laughs> explain a little bit. So they're ASIC gel light threes. I feel I feel kind of crazy, you know, even <laughs> showing something like that. But you know, if this is the time in your life to show things like yeah, that. Yeah. So we got some orange and black gel light threes. I don't know how much more I could you know dig into it. But this, you, if you if you look at pictures, 
These are, these are them. These are the shoes. So those are cool the, looking <laughs> shoes. I mean, yeah. honestly, for today, and you know, yeah. those are cool. So you got the spandex. You got the the Asics. Um, <laughs> definitely an interesting time. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got Simon Phillips wearing his like Tama branded uh, spandex <laughs> pants and stuff like that. Right. Honestly, right. though. Like these guys are athletes. The way yeah. they're playing, it's yeah. like good to. I mean, it's it's you yeah. know, it's, uh, especially them. I mean, they they play for uh, still to this day. They when we went down to Giant, uh, I'm sorry, I keep calling it Giant Stadium, MetLife Stadium. It was a two hours and fifteen minutes there, and nonstop. So these wow. you're like they're athletes. They're just going yeah. nonstop. So totally, yeah. Um. All right. Well, anything else we should uh, touch on while we're at, at this point? Well, we should talk about the pedals. Um, so yes. the pedals kind of did go through a change. I mean, I believe it was the Pro Beat uh, 45s or H HP 45s when uh, the kit first came out in the variation and the first variation. So he did switch to the HP 90s, the first generation Iron Cobras. That's the one with the silver board and the black inlays. Um, really, yeah. really cool pedals. So that was that was switched. Uh, we had, we're running a Remo uh, Ebony Ambassadors on the bottom. We're still using pinstripes on the top. Um, we still have an auxiliary arm, auxiliary hi-hat arm on the right. Uh, so the symbols really don't change much in layout from the Damage Justice Tour. The throne is an HT90, and he always kept towels on him. Um, like I said, he sweats a lot, and I, you know, you, you do slide around on on some of the vinyl oh, sure. or leather. So there was always some towels there. There was always kind of a a multi clamp on the main hi hat stand with a towel hanging over, like a Tama multi clamp, and then you yeah. drape drape a towel over it. So th those are some pieces of hardware there. Yeah, and I and and you have uh, some pictures too of like like ads with like Lars showing this off. I mean, it's it's worth saying that. Like he's a main draw to Tama. Like Tama's like ruling yeah. the the world at that point. That's, I mean, M Tama, Neil, Lars, Metallica, Lars, Neil. Yeah. They're ruling the world right now. Um, yeah. And that's that is the next thing we should go into. They actually released a retail kit. The story goes they released twenty five of them. Uh, twenty came to America. I think five were supposed to go to Europe, but only three made it. Uh, two got damaged. Oh jeez. Um, and there is a. I believe I've included a picture of the uh, the only retail ad that I've seen in English. There's another one in German, but it says the same thing we discussed that, you know, he talks about if he's going to do it and he's going to release a retail kit, he wants it to be an exact replica of what he uses on stage. So then they get into, well, Thomas said, you know, that might drive the cost up too much. So he said, well, why don't we release one exact and one with maybe like chrome symbol stands, like the first variation we saw on the European tour, kind of, you know, uh, chrome stands, chrome hardware, not black, to keep the cost down. And then, yeah. he, then he talked about in the ads royalties and this and that, and he said he wasn't going to take any royalties, kick them back to you and, and get the savings. But for being such a popular kit back then, there's really not much information on that retail kit. And that's another thing I was talking with. You know, Billy Harrington actually owns one of these uh, retail kits. Ah, that's what it yeah. is. I didn't realize the level of rarity. I didn't yeah. know if it was like 10,000 were made or something. Right. There wow, was, there that's was cool. 25, three were damaged. And Billy was saying the same thing. Hey, I can't really find any information on this. Same with wow. me. You have the one ad and then you have one in German. And there's not much information on it. So if anybody from Tom is watching this, please go into the vaults, you know, give us a build sheet, a, a, some, <laughs> some kind of information. The most, the most, one of the most popular kits in the world, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see some more. So, but. Crazy. Uh, I've run into, I've run into them three times, you know, on eBay. And there's always been something in the way. This is how life goes. And I've missed them three times. I'm not going to miss it the next time. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next time you're like so, selling your car or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, do they, well, do we know how much originally they were selling for? And what do they typically go for now? I, I, I've, I've heard two numbers. I, I don't know if they're, you know, they're accurate, but I heard, I heard five grand back in 1991 and I heard 10 grand. Maybe that's, for, you know, 10 grand for the one with the chrome stands five grand uh, i'm sorry with the black stands five grand for the one wow. with the chrome uh i, I don't that seems kind of high for back then but yeah I, I mean it was the most popular kit on the in the world at the time i mean um, that's you know quickly googling it because it's easy now 11 that's equivalent to eleven thousand dollars in purchasing power today yeah so, yeah. so it's quite expensive um yeah. honestly the last time i saw it 
Uh, I missed one about five years ago. It was up for twelve grand, but it finally sold for six grand. Uh, you okay. you know you can imagine how hard I was kicking myself when I missed that. No one <laughs> got down to six grand. I should have jumped on it. That that's a yeah, story for yeah. a different day. That's and, a lot, but that's but I mean this is what you're this is what you do. This is what so. you do. So <laughs> yeah. you, you know yeah. you live you learn. I regret yeah. it. I can't go back. I've I've run into it three times. I'm hoping one more. Um, yep. I did see You'll get one, it. Yeah, I did see one in 2019, but it was, it was heavily damaged. Um, why somebody would let a kit like this get in such bad shape? I mean, well, ugh. I mean, the Gene Krupa drum set that I just had an episode on mm -hmm. was Gene's drums, and it was in like a wet basement for decades. <laughs> yeah. And you, you never know. People don't realize. You, never, you, you might, never know. You might look at it and someone just someone doesn't know what it is and it's in an attic or someone died and it's they yeah, got, you know exactly yeah. so this this thing popped up uh, the price was actually four grand on reverb but you know it was missing lugs it was missing uh, kick drum hoop claws uh, there was no snare there were no stands and uh, it, it wow. was just beat up so I let it go but that you know that okay. was going for four grand I know the guy who got it so congratulations to him I mean if you got the time to put into it and yeah. uh, there was not much information on these. No. St still to this day so that that kind of you know that surprises me of a, of a kit that uh that popular there's not much information but yeah. and each one of them came with a serial number and a badge inside signed by lars so if anybody tries to you know say hey you know this is lars kit uh, look inside there's a badge with a serial number and he signed it so that was another That's cool that was another thing with the retail kit so very cool he did that and kicked back any like royalty kind of payments so yeah that, that's cheaper, what it says so. in the ad very so neat. yeah yeah, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so that I, I mean, they did release another one in 2017, uh, another uh, you know, a large, deeper purple uh, retail kit, but nothing, nothing quite as popular as as this. This is release. iconic. This is yeah. iconic still to this day. Whenever whenever you talk about the drums, everybody mentions, "Hey, well, they say the white grand star, but I'm telling you, it's the white art star too." <laughs> they say, "Hey, that that white drum set from the black album." Everybody just brings that up. So this is yeah. this this is the height. This is the kit, so. Yeah, very cool. All right, good to know. So let's keep chugging here. Okay, so this kit goes on till about uh, summer of 94. Um, now we get some major, major changes that kind of are still in, in play today. So summer 94, it's the same. Well, I shouldn't say the same Art Star kit, but it's it's the same style. Uh, when you when you look at it off the bat, it looks like he took the 10 by 10 and the 16 by 15 off. But when you dig into it some more, these are um, virgin kick drums. You can tell from the video, there is no tom mount in them. So yeah. if, if, if he were just to pull the toms off, you would see a hole or you would see the tom mounts that he left. So he got two new kick drums for this kit. So he got two 16 by 24s and he's using the 12 by 11 and the 14 by 13. He's using the two 18 by 16s at, um, in the summer of 94. So he's cut it down dramatically. Uh, sucks the hi-hat in closer. Now the story was, I believe he went to uh, Alice in Chains rehearsal and he was playing, I, th I think the guy's name is Sean Kenny or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so he, was, right. he was playing his drums and he had, you know, one mounted rack tom. And he said, uh, he commented, you know, the hi-hat stand is right in front of me instead of all the way over to the side. And it's just uh, <laughs> yeah. m much Mind easier to blown. play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that uh, led to him downsizing. Yeah. So, and didn't Allison Chains famously like comment about the haircuts on like MTV unplugged or something. Yeah. yeah. Like friends don't let friends get, get friends haircuts. haircuts. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. So this we're still a little bit before that. He's still, got I know, a, I know we, but it's we, funny we still, that yeah. connection with, right, right. Yeah. So yeah. now still got the black hardware. Now the interesting thing about this summer 94 tour is he's using three Chinas. So the China we know today on the right side where the ride would normally be, we see that pop up for the first time in 94. Right there on the right, the lower one that, that we still have today. This is when we first see it. Okay. On this kit, we're still using the Regal Tip uh, 5Bs wrapped. That's that's going to come to an end also. Okay, but yeah. uh, and we're, we're still using the A-Zillions. And I should mention, all along, uh, from the uh, pretty much from Ride the Lightning till today, everything's brilliant on the symbols, always has been, uh, is now, was then. That that doesn't change. Everything's brilliant. I didn't mention that. No, but he was using 
we assume old Zildjians before pre-label right. Zildjians were just assuming, right, right. but then it was Platinums, then Platinums, it was A's. It's A's, and, that, and in the end, it's going to be uh, A Customs. Yeah, yeah. And everything's been, uh, you know, brilliant. So now he switches to, he has a double tom stand. I think it was an HW99N double tom stand. Essentially, what that is is just the M2, uh, the MTH300, but instead of being mounted in the kick drums, it's on its own stand now. It's in between the two kick drums in the middle. Cool. I mean, I think it's it's cool. He's obviously, so he's cut down two toms. So basically, he's just lost two toms. He's, lost, he's lost two toms. There's still power toms yeah. at this point. You know, yeah. they still got the black heads. Um, and that 14 by 13, I mean, it's still pretty big. Yeah. Uh, it's still pretty big power tom, but he's, he's still yeah. got it, so. All right, that's cool. Well, it seems like this two tom in the middle setup uh, went into other kits down the road. So yeah. you know that that he obviously liked that setup. Yeah, but, um, that's that's still the way it is to this day too. Yep, exactly. Okay, well let's keep uh, keep going. Oh, uh, actually, while you said, I don't want to forget, you said Regal Tip sticks. Regal Tips, yeah. I heard the other day. I read online, and this is something that I, I'm. I, there can be more info about it. I believe Regal Tip is actually trying to like reopen and oh, go okay. back. Come back, kind of out of the. But they got COVID problems. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Family members uh, passing away and stuff. That's so. that's good to hear. I would like to see some five Bs come back out on the market. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Don't hold me to it, but everyone yeah. go do their own research. Uh, but well, I think that's what I saw. So. Good. That's good to hear. So. Yep. All right. Like I said, the three Chinas. This didn't last long. Uh, I believe it to be an eighteen, where the ride, uh, where, where normally where a ride symbol would be. He uses a China still to this day. I believe that to be an eighteen, and probably a nineteen and a twenty. Probably still using the K China. Very hard to give you a hundred percent definitive answer on that. Uh, there's not many pictures of ninety four uh, of the kit available, so it's hard to you know really see what he's using. But if you were interested to see it. That one was used on Woodstock '94. Oh, cool! So if you pulled that up on YouTube, you can get a you know you can get a show there with that with him using that kit. So nice. One of the first CDs I bought, a used double disc CD set of uh, Woodstock '94. So yeah. special memories from that me. was a unique show. <laughs> yeah, very unique. Yeah. Seems like a bit of a mess. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. All right. That's cool. So uh, then next we have Donington. Donington correct? 95. Uh, everybody comes back with a little different hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, what, it wasn't It wasn't a long tour. It was three shows. I think they did a couple in London. And then there was there was like a, a contest up in Tuktoyaktuk. Uh, I, I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Way up in the Northern Territories. I remember doing them. They did something in like the, they called it the Big Igloo. Um, okay. I, th I think Hole was there, Veruca Salt. So it, it was a contest. Some people had won, um, and they went up to see that show. Uh, so this was kind of like a, a three show. They called it Escape from the Studio '95. Um, mm. So, so right, be right between you know Summer Night, uh, the the uh, the White Art Star Two, and and the Silver Sparkle Star Classic from Load and Reload. They we have this. It, it's kind of another mixed up kit um so i'm seeing two art star well it's, they've always been art star i'm seeing the art star kick drums but now with the art star hardware in chrome and they look yeah. to be they look to be downsized to a 22 by 16 the single lug hardware and the two toms are definitely a 10 by 10 uh, i think it's a 10 by it could be 10 by 9 and a 12 by 10 or 12 by 11 you know some shows he's got the black grand star hardware 10 inch and then he's running the single or the uh, yeah the single lug art star chrome hardware on the 12 and then vice versa and then some shows he's using both of the grand stars with the black hardware it was kind of just like kind of a kit maybe he just threw together and sorry right, bring these out for three shows yeah so i mean because again the amount of effort because if it's not a world tour mega arena you know 70 shows or whatever whatever most people don't now notice on stage you know? right right so they had those three shows um the symbols seem to be the same you know i think uh i think we lost two chinas or lost one china i think he's now using two i don't see the third one anymore um i think he's still using the right side hi-hat uh not many not many pictures of this um hmm. you can see donnington 95 on youtube it's not the best quality but you could see it Sure. Um, 
and he's running Remo clear, uh, clear ambassadors on the bottom. Uh, Remo uh, clear pinstripes on the top. Um, looks to be the two 18 by 16 floor toms. 95 is when we first see him use the uh, Easton Ahead aluminum sticks. So 94 was the last time that he used the Regal Tip uh, 5B Woods. I remember him saying, I remember reading that, uh, you know, when they were doing that summer tour, the nights would get cold, some nights would get cold, and he would snap like four or five sticks the first two songs, and he said he just couldn't do it anymore. He said, he, you know, he loved Regal Tip, and they were always so good to him, but out of necessity, he had to change. So 94 is it marks the end of him and Regal Tip. So now he's with uh, Easton ahead. Uh, they are aluminum sticks, and they kind of got that plastic uh, sleeve that lays over them. Um, yeah. Still using them to this day. Good sticks. Uh, different sound on the cymbal than opposed to wood. So, I've never used the ahead sticks. I've seen them. I think at Guitar Center, I held them once. But the the whole thing is that they um, they just like don't break, right? Well, they do break, but not as often. So I had a pair. I, my first pair was ninety nine when uh, ninety nine when I first started getting into drumming, and you know they were twenty nine ninety five back then. I don't I don't know what they are now. Um, they 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 That's do a lot. yeah they do last a bit longer, but um, the sleeves tend to wear out. Uh, uh, and, and you'd have to go get replacement sleeves. And now when the replacement sleeves wear out, it's not easy to pull them off and put them back on. I can remember, you know, I was like 17 or 18. I was always borrowing my mother's hair dryer to get these sleeves. on. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to heat them up and slide them on. Yeah. Um, so, but they did break not, not as fast, but when they broke, it's like, Thirty thirty dollars, you know, to go get another <laughs> pair. I mean, nowadays it's a little easier. Maybe you know he's endorsed by him, but uh, back then, being seventeen or eighteen, you really <laughs> you couldn't yeah, do you don't it. Pay thirty bucks. Right. That's like with the drum heads now. It's like, yeah, oh, God, I broke a head. I got to pay but, for this uh, thing. It's yeah, definitely yeah. stronger than wood. But and he mentioned this too. They sound different on the cymbals. And I re remember reading um, in the studio. You know, sometimes he'd have a wood stick in his right hand and the aluminum stick in his left just to get that desired sound on the cymbals. So I, I do yeah, remember him mention yeah. that because they do they do sound differently, the uh, aluminum and the kind of plastic yeah. sleeve. So yeah, that, so that's 95 and that picks up. And like I said, that's still this way today. He's still using them. And they got some kind of, I remember we discussed how uh, he had in the earlier years, probably uh, it was the Torna green tennis wrap tape. Mm -hmm. And it mo it moved up to probably stick handler when he was endorsed by them. But now he's using the uh, Easton makes kind of a black wrap too, not yeah. quite like that stuff. It reminds me more of the stuff you'd put on a baseball bat. I mean, sure. Easton is a baseball bat company too, but it's like this black wrap. So he uses that over the aluminum. Okay, I was gonna say. I mean, in my mind, I was the name was sounding familiar. It, it is the same company that makes baseball. Yeah, bats. pretty much aluminum baseball bats. Wow. So I don't know if they okay. go by Easton anymore. Now I just read like ahead. So maybe they dropped that name. Yeah. Or maybe they got yeah. bought out. I'm not sure there. Maybe I don't somebody. Know. I, mean, could... I had an Easton baseball bat as a kid. Yeah. You know, so it's did I. Like, yeah. But in um, the early years, I can remember the ads when they would come out in like the Modern Drummer. It was Easton ahead. And now I just see a head, man. So maybe I'm overlooking it, or or maybe somebody knows what changed, but uh, I can't really answer that one. So yeah, stuff changes. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So then, if we move forward here, we're at a pretty big change. Uh, I mean, we're at a pre pretty big change. So, yeah. so now Load has come out ninety summer ninety six. Um, he is he is now using. So Art Star and Grand Star pretty much. Yeah, they're yesterday's news at this time. The new thing going on is Star Classic, Thomas Star Classic. He's using the maple. I believe that was also a nine ply uh, Star Classic maple. Single lugs, not a one piece. So I, he always liked that. And um, they had something come out back then. It was called the Starcast mounting system. So no longer was the mount bolted to the shell or screwed to the shell, whatever you want to call it. It was yeah. kind of like a bracket that, uh, you know, bolts to the hoop. And yep. then it's kind of like, so what it does is it lets the shell, you know, resonate some more. Yeah. So, Which is now yeah. the norm on nicer, right. like a rims mount or yes. anything. It's a nicer, you know, more uh, scientifically, it's like better yeah. for the drums. Right. Yeah. So the first time we see that is 96 uh, okay. with the Thomas Starr Classic. So that kit was famous and I believe cunning stunts. And he used that 
all the way up to 2000. I believe the last time we saw it was Jason's last performance when they did Fade to Black in 2000. But so that kit was used for a while. So it was called Silver Sparkle was the color. The sizes are now 16 by 22 on the kicks. So we're kind of, well, I should say 95 the kit is kind of mimicking what was to be uh, in 96. So we're using 10 by 9, uh, 12 by 10, and we're still using a 16 by 16 and an 18 by 16. So we're uh, done with power toms. Pretty much, except for the floor toms. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're still bigger than w what we got going on today, but the power toms are pretty much gone. You're, you're not going to see a 16 by 15 or a 15 <laughs> by 14. <laughs> the bass drum's anymore. like, thank you, no yeah, more. <laughs> that That's done, so. Okay. So that's, I think these drums are awesome. I mean, They are. W were people like, like were, were Lars like, you know, enthusiasts such as yourself, is this kit received well or is this kind of a oh, Lars changed? And I know there's haircuts and all this, but do people like these in the deep in the Lars world? It's like it's like two different factions, like like a guy like me. I mean, you see what's behind me. I'm kind of stuck there. Nothing yep. against the Star Classic. They're wonderful drums. And, and yep. I, you know, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to agree with him. It is so much easier to play what he set up with nowadays but it's just like you know these the kits that i got behind that's this is what i dreamed about in like uh, L, um i should say middle school i got a lot yeah, of yeah, i got yeah. a lot of failing grades thinking about this kit behind <laughs> the me. white art star kit yeah right. the black hardware so yeah. this is kind of so like the two factions you've got your guys your older thrash guys your older metallica guys you know they they're kind of into this you know they yeah, I'm not going to say it wasn't perceived well, but it's it's not gotcha. as popular. I gotcha. So it's that, a sign of the times changing, yeah. and it's. I had a Star Classic kit. It was like my first real deal drum set. I saved up for working all summer at a butcher, and I bought the drum set, and I loved it. I used it for yeah. years, and they're, they're great. They're great drums. Nothing against them, but no, I understand that. You, understand. you just got to change of the times now, and yes. so so for me. It's the it's the old power toms. That's just how I am. I'm not saying they're better or, or no, it's smarter, easier. That's just I can't explain it. But I understand so. completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha. So all right, pedals, symbols, hardware. What do we got? So pedals. We're still using the first generation Iron Cobras, like like um, like the second half of the uh, White Arts Art Star Two kit. We're still using okay. the first generation Iron Cobras. The stands are still the HC one hundred four TBs, the real heavy duty uh, Thomas Stilts. Um, so now that he's moved, removed a Tom, or actually he removed two Toms, but now that he removed the Tom on the left, the hi-hat's in closer now. So he's using a uh, hi-hat to bass drum attachment. Um, I don't think, I wasn't able to find the model on that, but it's kind of like, so it, you know, well, anybody who, who does drums know what it is. It clamps to the hoop. It clamps legs to the hi-hat. Legs go up. Legs go up, or sometimes, like nowadays, they, they make them with no legs. It's a legless hi-hat yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's using that. Interesting, we see a ride come back. A ride symbol comes back in 96. And not only does a ride symbol come back, but we see the first ever, the first time ever I see we see a splash symbol on a tour oh, wow. kit. Looks to me like he's got a 10-inch splash mounted on there. Huh. Ab above his 18, that he still has, say, 18-inch uh, FX China. I could be wrong, but I think the only song I've ever heard in it was uh, um, Bleeding Me. So, and I know they did play that live, so maybe that's solely why he had it. But... He never had it before in any tour kits, and to this day, he's never had it again. So that's okay. that 96 to 2000, we see the splash. It's kind of short-lived, and that it lives kind of in that area. We're still using, I believe at this time, we're, I think he's down to two crashes on the right and two on the left. You know, uh, And we're A Customs now, you said? No, we're still uh, A still Zildjian A's. at this time. Okay. Still brilliant. Um, me, I think they're medium fins now, or medium... Uh, where we're still not at the projection. That comes with the A Custom. Now he's using a uh, Tama Bell Brass Snare, 14 by uh, 6.5. I believe it is the PL565 Bell Brass. Uh, that's new. He's been using wood uh, like we discussed. Well, you know, we had that little uh, area where we we heard it was a Bell Brass, a white-painted uh, white Bell Brass, but, you know, we really don't think so. But now he's using a Bell Brass. It's confirmed. It's in the pictures. So that's, that's sure. the snare. Um, yeah. Coded, uh, controlled sound, coded reverse dot, um, and we were on the kick drum, so black kick drum hoops. I love that. Yeah. I think it looks awesome. On the silver sparkling, you kind of have like a, a white coated uh, ambassador 
uh, Rezo head with the black Tama decals. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Looks like we got he he's he's smart to always have. There's cup holders all over the place. There are like near the hi hat. It looks like there's yeah. one. It's like I like the little utility things like that. Or like or he's got towels all over, like you said, for yeah. the spitting and the sweating. It's like you know you do this all the time. You know what you need. You know you need, you know you're gonna <laughs> drop a stick and you're gonna need yeah. to pick it up where it needs to be. Um, interestingly enough, for for this uh, for years they kind of call it. He was. He said it was called the coffee table. The the uh, the second floor. Tom. It oh, never. Nice. It never really gets used. Stuff <laughs> just kind of gets piled on it. But they still have to like tune it and uh, sound check it and everything. But yeah, that's so. interesting because like it would be without that, it would kind of be just very different. You're used yeah. to him having that bigger of a drum set. So for him having it set up, it like feels right to have that big of a kit even if you don't use it so right right it just feels right <laughs> yeah and it's still that way to this day um he's you know they're a little smaller but he's still using too i mean there, there's been some instances on the tour where he's moved up forward and kind of like a v stage and you know he his kits tend to rise from underneath the stage now but now that he's close to be one floor tom uh, okay. we'd, be, we'd be missing the second probably for you know portability or where he is you know whatever he could fit in that area so sure. So that's kind of that's kind of what's going on with that. This Star Classic is pretty interesting. Well, actually, the color anyway. Uh, during this time period, there was kind of a couple variations on it. So, if you look in, especially the King Nothing video, the King Nothing video, he's playing a. It's probably an Art Star, but it's got the Grand Star lugs. Huh. So he's playing a Silver Sparkle Grand Star, which they didn't make that. So that was something custom, and there was also. You know, back when MTV was popular, there was something called, um, I think it was called the Motherload Contest. Huh. Uh, this was up in Aberdeen, Washington, kind of like what we talked about in Tuk Toy Ok Tuk. Uh, it was a bunch of contest winners. And he shows up, and you could see the video on YouTube. He shows up with kind of like the same setup as the Star Classic, but it's a, it's a Silver Sparkle Grand Star. Or I, I should say probably an art star, but I, I see I still get that confused. It's got the grand star single lugs, is what I mean. Sure. In silver sparkle, which they didn't make, and it mimics this uh, load error star classic. So that's pretty neat. So there's a couple variations there. So yeah. If you, if interesting. You, yeah. If you wanted to check that out, it's called the mother load contest on Aberdeen, Washington. So huh. that's pretty neat to see. Kind of like a, a bar area. There's like 50 contest winners. So that cool. that's that's a cool variation to check out on that. Yeah, and I imagine custom stuff. I mean, first off, Tama has the ability to do a bunch of stuff, but to for do, one of their biggest. Yeah, they'll do anything. They'll do anything for yeah. lives. Yeah. So, and yeah. I believe that gear was given away at the end of the show. So that's, yeah, he's not going to give his, <laughs> his Star Classic Tour kit away. No. But it's something to give away, you know. Yeah. So that is a massive change yeah. of style of kit, but yeah. it seems like for a while we stay in that same vein. So up next, I mean, that's 96 to, to, thou to 2000. To 2000, you know, you have Load Reload, S&M, uh, yep. Garage Inc. comes out. Um, yep. You know, there's from now, from then till now, it's it's kind of all the same layout. There's There has been changes, subtle changes, but when he went from the white Art Star 2s to the uh, pr pr summer 94 and then to the uh the silver sparkle that's the biggest change that's the biggest period yeah. of change yeah um well let's just go through them though so we got up next looks like on the list of pictures you sent we got the green sparkle saint anger kit the saint anger kit uh thomas star classic maple uh emerald yep. green uh nine ply we are still using the uh, thomas stilt stands the hc 104 tbs and now we're kind of using an emperor kind of coated emperor on the batter heads and and some uh clear ambassador on the uh, rezo heads now during this period the monkey and the danish flag they do come back <laughs> for a little <laughs> bit in the beginning That's um cool. i have seen some pictures of it so the sizes then they're uh they're still using the 20 he's still using the 22 by 16 kick drums using the 10 by 8 rack tom a 12 by 10 i believe it is yeah definitely and we go to a 16 by 14 and a 16 by 16. So that's another change. The uh, so the floor toms get a little smaller in the length there. And now he switches over to the second generation Iron Cobras. 
Um, yeah, I which have, are awesome. Yeah, which I, I have. I I, I still uh, have it here, and they're I, nice, man. I think I have that. That's an HP 900P Power Glide Iron Cobras. I had them myself too. They were good pedals. Um, and a, an interesting thing now that we're going to talk about pedals, and this is going to go all the way back. He's always been kind of a traditional felt beater kind of guy. Um, everything you know, as Iron Cobra went on, the beater's uh, styles and sizes change but he's yeah. always when you look at pictures he's always run the uh original felt beater that's that's o- cool that's always been a thing that i've noticed yeah, yeah. i mean he's and, seen all the evolution of every all this gear so yeah that's and, one thing you can stick with you yeah know? so that's that's what he uh that's what he's used to playing and that's what he keeps danmar kick pads are coming into the picture they came in around uh you know 96 I forgot to mention that, but uh, they're pretty much to this sure. day. We're using Danmar. I think it's the metal power disc uh, kick pad. So yeah. that's there. Um, now, St. Anger, we have to talk about it. I feel like there's a lot of stuff with Lars that like people can have their opinions one way or another. We've been we're staying above it all, and we're like we're not getting into the debate about yeah. uh, the, all the stuff about do right. people like Lars. It's the, everyone has their own personal taste. I, exactly. It's, the snare sound, though, and all that stuff with St. Anger is like... It's I mean, different. It comes, it's, it's different. It comes up all the time. What's uh, your take on the whole thing? I mean, it's it's not my favorite, but it, it is what it is. He's... Uh, uh, you, you can't argue. He's the most influential... One of the most influential drummers of all time. So, yeah, it's not my favorite, but, you know, he's just... He is who he is. It's... They tried something, they too. Try, he sound. tried something new. Um, I'm... Uh, not one of my favorites not a fan of the guitar sounds any of that but you know there's still some really good songs on there so yeah. when you when you listen to load reload and then you go into saint anger there's some some really heavy songs on there it just happens to be mixed differently i'll say uh yeah. some people love it some people don't um yeah it, it, it's a it, different decade it's a different yeah like it's a different millennium <laughs> Think, yeah, things were different then too you know now you're getting yeah. away from the grunge and you have more you're like your lincoln parks i, I think i remember yeah. him saying something about uh that summer or, or that winter before they recorded he was listening to a lot of lamb of god and okay. any, a, anybody who listens to lamb of god when chris adler was the drummer he's kind of got that snare sound too a little Ringy. different than, yeah a little different yeah. than St. Anger but I remember reading somewhere it, it may not be true it may be rumor but I remember reading specifically that Lars was a fan and kind of you know I don't want to say recreated but that was influencing him at the time yeah. um they tried like you said they tried something new and it yep. is what it is so <laughs> yeah and I but, mean I think most people if you're watching this and you're in part two an hour and 10 minutes in everyone's probably seen some kind of monster but that i think that's a pretty cool documentary just to see to get a look at their you know what what things were happening with the band right and, it, and if anything it goes back to it's pretty cool to see all the gear that was there uh if anything if you're kind of like i know we're doing a gear episode here so uh there's just all kinds of variations of stuff when they went up into i i forget what the name of the the bunker they went up to before you know things fell apart and james went to rehab but there's all yeah. kinds of tama drums up there different yeah. colors different variations so just yeah watching uh, some kind of monster just when you see all the all the gear that in itself is pretty cool but uh, you know that yeah. i did enjoy that documentary I for, it was for cool. what yeah. it was yeah it was yeah, good. very raw. Yeah. But, so the snare, though, when I'm looking at these pictures, this gets to like, is that his signature oh, that, series? Yeah, we should mention that. That's another thing that changed. Uh, he gets his own signature series snare, like you just said. It's kind of like a, a diamond plate uh, steel snare. There's a model on a model number on it. Uh, it's LU 1465. You could still get it to this day. Um, 14, six and a half deep. And he still has that to this day. But now, you know, it's in Black Diamond. I think last year they released, like, uh, I think it was the 30th anniversary, they released the Black Album version or anniversary version with the snare. It had cool. his uh, picture they had on the cover of the Black Album where their kind of faces are white or gray. And it had that on the badge. It was the 30th anniversary. It was pretty cool, Black Diamond. Yeah. Yeah, it was a cool series. So he's using that now in the St. Anger, and he's going to be using this model up until today. Like I said, it'll go from the uh, the silver diamond plate or the uh, whatever you want to call the color up into the sure. black diamond nowadays. So that's, so that's another thing that did change. So change of members as well. Yes. When did Jason leave? Was that what, – what album was he out on? So – 
I think the last thing they did together was S and M. Okay. Um, I, I remember seeing the video. It's kind of a to me. It's kind of a sad video. So I never really. I know it's in two thousand. I never really looked at the date, but they played Fade to Black. Um, okay. And you could just tell it was really. There was a little bit more of emotion. Yeah. <laughs> in that one. Uh, yeah. he, he knew it was his last show. They knew it was his last show. But Lars was using the Silver Sparkle uh, Star Classic in that video. That's on YouTube if you want to search that. So, Got it. so his, okay. I, I believe, yeah, he was ninety. Uh, S and M was the last thing they did together. Okay, and then because I'm looking at pictures and I'm going, okay, Robertson now. Which I was watching uh, the other night. I was watching Encino Man, as mm-hmm. one does, and uh, Robert was uh, playing bass and like the band in the high school. Um, really. Yeah, he's in that. Yeah. Movie. I got to check that out. Yes, at the end, and I saw it, and uh, I don't think it's Mike Patton singing. It's there's a few. It might have been Stephen Perkins on the drums from uh, Jane's Addiction, and because uh, at the end it, it gives credit to, or I might have Googled it, but it was mm-hmm. it said Robert Trujillo. Yeah. Okay, Green Sparkle, Saint Anger. Anything else on this one? A Customs come into the picture. Oh, cool. The Zildjian A Customs come in, so it's still the uh, uh, I'm going to say left side seventeen eighteen. Uh, 1817 on the left. He's still got his 18 inch China, and we know he's got another China way off by the second floor, Tom. But now the Dino Beats. Oh, I'm sorry, their projection crash. I should mention that. Sure. And now the Dino Beats are still around, but they change from Z Custom to A Custom Dino Beats. And that's when they do about Saint Anger, about that area, and they're still like that today. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, he's still using projection today. That's when the switch happened around Saint Anger. Awesome. All so, right. Well, that's good. So, I mean, yeah. talk about a versatile symbol. I mean, a customs are they cross the gamut of of. But he also, but again, he likes lighter symbols because a lot yes. of metal guys aren't using right. a customs. Like so. like like we discussed last episode. Like it's it's hard for me to comprehend him using the uh, thin symbols, but I guess they work. But um, except yeah. for that black album, uh, the the white art star two kit. Like I said, um, the information says on the left side rock crashes. Uh, you know, I'll I'll bring that up. I don't know if it's true or not. It could be. Yeah, something to bring up. Yeah, sure. All right, Death Magnetic up De- next. Death Magnetic, two thousand eight. Um, the same thing. Thomas Star Classic. It's called Magnetic Orange. A uh, custom color for him. You really couldn't. Get, you can get something close. I believe back then it was called Marigold Sparkle. I, mm. I think it's kind of close, but. Less cool of a name. Yeah, exactly. Than, uh... <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. So his is magnetic orange, pretty much the same size as a Saint Anger. Now the big change is he switched to the Road Pros. That's and they're still using Road Pros today. That's when that switch happened. Um, yeah, they're a little lighter than the uh, HC one hundred four TBs that he was using all these years, but that's good hardware nonetheless. Sure. Uh, so that's when that switch happened in two thousand eight. Pedals are still the same. You know the symbols are really still the same. He's using his cus- his uh, his line snare, his fourteen uh, LU fourteen sixty five, still in the silver. You know, still using the emperor coateds on the uh, the batters on the toms, clears on the bottom. Not really much more to say. Uh, so he's just like, which is there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, you right, don't right. need to reinvent the like your drum set every single time. But it's cool that for each tour, he's just doing a different color doing like, a different color that, some subtle changes here and there yeah. you know some hardware upgrades but uh so mainly all the variations and all the changes are kind of kind of behind him it's kind of done yeah. um and things are he's in his, he's in his niche now and he's getting older and this is what he this is what he plays and, yeah which is <laughs> and nothing wrong with, nothing wrong with yeah. it but that's that's just it so yes yes and so unless there's anything else next we go to purple we go to the deeper purple which is another custom kit um, nothing's really changed except the fact that now they release this as a retail kit. So I remember in 16, and uh, I believe it was 2016, might have been the late, it came out in late 16 hardwired, but I maybe uh, at late 16, early 17, they released this as a retail kit. Um, without the snare, I believe at the time, and I, I think it was four or 5,000, just a shell kit. Uh, but that's the second time that he's had a, uh, a retail kit released to his spec. So that was pretty cool at the time. Um, and there's some guys that have a kit. I, I talked to a guy, Jeremy, Jeremy Olsley. Uh, he's got one of the kits. I, I think he's a bus driver for a lot of bands. Or, um, oh, nice. Yeah, so he actually has one of them. And it's a really nice color. It's beautiful. Um, 
I forget how many they released. I think it was more than 25. Not too entirely sure, but it seems like, you know, it, it was around for a while. I mean, it wasn't around okay. for years, but you could probably get it six months after it was released. And you could probably find it today if you looked hard enough. Um, yeah. Same thing. You know, you got your 10 by 9, your 12 by 10, 16 by 14 floor, uh, 16 by 16, and your two 16 by 22s. Um, and I believe he did use... I believe he used Remo uh, Ebony's ambassadors on the bottom, and yep. and he, and he used his. Now he's got the. We we spoke about the uh, Lars Ulrich model snare, the black diamond. He's using that, um, and I have seen the same kit with clear ambassadors on it. So little variation there. Yeah, but that that, that that's mainly how that went. But uh, and it looks like, which I assume was on the the other kits too. It it still has the bass drum the front bass drum like uh, still still has the anchors the anchor yeah. um i believe we're starting to, now we're starting to see the remo logo on the kick drum heads i believe oh, yeah you're right yeah i believe that came about the uh the death magnetic kit the magnetic orange uh but now we're seeing the remo logo under on the on the very bottom and the tama one on the top i wonder so, why i mean beyond just like i want to support remo and yeah. represent them or a contractual we're going to pay you money kind of thing yeah that's uh that's something there. Yeah, that'd be nice to know, but uh, we we never saw it before, and so that, yeah. that's another subtle little change there. It looks good. I mean, sometimes people like there's a fine line of like the bass drum head is like one logo's cool, in my opinion. Two is looking that's still pretty cool, but when you start to have every brand new oh, endorse yeah. all over the whole thing, that's a a thing that's kind of uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit much. I'm not into this, it. I mean, this looks cool. Yeah, this is cool. So. Um, Oh, the, the hardware did change. Um, I'll get you the model number on that. We're using the HP 900s now. The uh, the the newest model, and they're still available today. That's what they're still using, um, the Iron Cobras. It's got the Cobra spring underneath. That's pretty cool. So he changed to that. But again, he's still using the uh, traditional felt beaters. And if you look, he's always kind of run, at least in the later years, he's run kind of like a grip tape down the pedal board. Probably for traction. I know Charlie Benante does that too, hmm. but it's kind of like a strip of grip tape on the pedals. Sure. For traction, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. which makes sense because, I mean, again, like Lars is playing so much <laughs> and so hard that he's like, do yeah. whatever works for you. Ex exactly. So, those are some subtle little changes on that kit. So, yeah. And we really haven't gone into mics too much, just kind of by, by choice, but it looks like we've gone from like the, Sennheiser 421s like underneath like or in the like in, in the tom inside now yeah, we've, yeah. Got, we've got the clip on right tom. instead of being mounted you know the kick drums yes. mounted on a separate stand so that that's a change too don't really I don't really know too much about the mics but yeah that is a good observation so that's another change there sure okay well um this is like you said now we're kind of getting into some minor changes and moving quickly here yeah. uh so we're up to what you just saw, right? Two, if, yeah, two weeks, two, okay, three weeks so ago. Um, 72, uh, 72 season seasons. Yeah. In my opinion, I think this is the, the best, at least looking kit since the white Arc Star 2s. I mean, this is cool. So we're just right off the bat, I mean, we've got the black hardware back, at least on yeah. the shells. You know, we're still using chrome stands, but we got the, the black shell hardware back. Now, that's cool. Um, that is cool. Some people like the yellow, so, some people don't, but I think it's cool. I think Tom, it's so new. I think Tom calls it sunny yellow lacquer is the color. Okay. Uh, and I believe it's one of their catalog uh, colors. You can get that. I don't think it was. I could be wrong. We, we're going to find out in the future what's going on. But let me rewind a little before I forget. When Lux Eterna came out uh, back in December, he was using the white Art Star 2s again for that video. It got a lot of people riled up and we thought, <laughs> you know, hey, awesome. hey, yeah. is he going to tour with this? Is Tama going to release something? Oh, man. Yeah. So he and, and they were the it wasn't like it wasn't a variation. They were the originals. You could see the rash on the kick drum. Oh, it, the sixteen by twenty four kick drum is back, and it's got the rash on it from where the sixteen by fifteen sat. So he brought that back for two videos, and man. then they just disappeared on us. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. a little taste. But it's just kind of like I feel like stuff like that is to show like we know we know like we know you like this. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I would love to see that come back. Uh, people have you know hinted to it i i don't think so but uh we may you know we may you, they may release one of the uh, yellow kits there might be a retail release 
Yeah. Um, but let's we'll, we'll dip into that one a little. Um, so the Tama logos on the kick drum. Again, you've got your ebony, probably ambassador stock Tama heads. You've got yellow Tama logos, yellow Remo logos. Um, uh, let me mention before I get to, he switched Power Stroke. I should have mentioned that a while back. Probably about the Load Reload Silver Sparkle Kit. He, he switched to Remo Power Stroke from the uh, pinstripes for his kick drum batter. So I apologize. So we'll, we'll, we'll correct that. But sure. so he's using the Power Stroke, uh, still using the Emperors, uh, the uh, Emperor Codeds on the Tom Batters. Um, the hardware pretty much hasn't changed. Um, the sizes have changed a little. I believe that's a 10 by 7. It's very shallow. I noticed that, and I had to look it up, and there wasn't really inf any information because it's so new. But if you look on the, the newest Tama catalog, it's they're they're offered they you know how they always build little they show you um examples of kits you can buy they've already built yeah it was always a 10 by 7 and a 12 by 9 were mentioned as the two rack toms and and noticing that it's a little more shallow i think he's i think he's definitely going going with a 10 by 7 on this one and a 12 by 9 for the two rack toms it looks like yeah. the 16 by 14 and the 16 by 16 are still there Hmm. But and he's got his you know his black diamond plated his model snare drum, and we're still using the projection crashes, um, and he's still using his Easton sticks at this time. So okay, so this is so new. So let's see what happens in the future. Maybe they maybe they do release this retail. That yeah, would I think be it's cool. yeah yeah yeah. I think it's awesome. It looks like undermounted mics on the cymbals, and, which is pretty yeah. Neat. And that's another thing I wanted to bring up. Didn't really research the mics, but. People are starting to say there's some, some triggers. They're seeing some triggers on these drums. Okay. Um, being an older drummer, I really don't know much about triggers. Somebody said it was for the gate. I don't even know what gate is, but I'll mention it. They said it was, you know, for the gate. I, I, I don't know. I'm just mentioning what I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it would, it would, you'd hit it, and then it would, it would release. Maybe if there's too much bleed from other things, right? You'd hit it, and it would tell it to open up and let the mic work at that okay, point. Okay, that's good to know. But that's what I've heard. So there are some triggers seen. I really don't know too much about triggers and mics, but uh, that that is yeah. something new I've heard. I think um, it's common. I mean, if in, even if he is, I think it's very common. Yeah. To be like, you know, we're going to supplement something or, and I've heard that, you know, there's people who are saying that like, oh, he's playing this and they're, su they're, they're supplementing things on recordings and things. And it's like, whatever. I think he's doing a good job. And, he's, he's doing, listen, he's 60 years old. Yeah. He said, you, you got to give him credit. I, you know, I don't, I, I'm 40. I can't do what he does at 60. <laughs> so you yeah. got to give him the credit. You know, I, I dislike hearing all that, all the criticism that he gets. I mean, everybody, they say, I, you, I can drum better. Can you? Can you drum better and run the biggest metal band in the world? You know, they're, they're still on tour. Like I said, I, I, I've been waiting 25 years to see him kind of like a bucket list thing. Yeah. And I was able to because he's still out there doing it at 60. Yeah. So he deserves credit for that alone so yeah and i'm seeing some pictures that you uh sent me where like simple stands are like knocked over and stuff and uh, what, uh what's the story with that that's an interesting point so he has four he's using four drum kits they've got this new kind of circular stage they call it in the round at least that's what my ticket said it's a stage in the round and i've heard him refer to that so okay. his his drums are underneath the stage all four of them and they stay that way pretty much until whichever song starts. And when I was watching some of the early videos, I think uh, when they were overseas, the cymbals are too tall to be oh. at full height under the stage. So I, sure. I saw, you know, the top would open, the uh, drum techs would then lift everything up. Got it. And they that would get sense. him into position to rise up out of the stage, you know, because because they've got the snake pit in the middle, so the stage dips and it rises, and wherever he is, it looks like it's a height clearance thing. Why they're kind of yeah. knocked over or adjusted or down? The, yeah, in, until yeah. they get him up and onto the stage, or at least till they get the platform opened, and then everything yep. gets adjusted. And a pretty cool uh, note that that platform actually spins very, very slowly. You you can't tell until like the song's over. He was facing you when the song started and now <laughs> you're minute. looking at the side of him. So that's that does spin too. And he's got four of them. It's it's uh it's a pretty cool design. Everybody gets a chance to see to see him in different. That's cool. Yeah. 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 
And it's like there's like little cups under the symbol stands. What do you think? Yes, what's the because deal with that? Um, it looks to me like uh, it's it's like a smooth hard surface. I mean, okay, uh, so it's a stop kind of. Yeah, kind of like a stop. Because if you're on a carpet, you know, it's it's not moving. He's had carpet before. I, you know, this is kind of so it doesn't walk on you. I would take yeah, it. Yeah, I've never seen that, so that's yeah. interesting. I mean, Th that, of course, that's he's something getting new too. Cutting edge stuff, and right. it looks like we have cameras mounted we, on the kit as well. They got cameras the mounted. They they're doing Jumbo a lot Tron. of yeah, they're doing a lot of media stuff now. They've got those. I don't know what you would call them. Like uh, they're, they're stands with the the circular video uh, screens on them and the speakers on them. So okay. they they do a lot of they do a lot of uh, media. Like you'll see them at the show and then now that camera that's on his hi-hat stand or cymbal stand is now projecting him up on the screen so that that that's all wired into that into the nice. show yeah yeah and, and the videos they release on youtube so it gets kind of like a close-up there that's really cool yeah that's Which, that's cool you know i i think it's awesome that they're still going and i've heard nothing but good things about the uh the the current show oh yeah so so again you had a good time yeah the show was good i mean like i said uh, last episode you know you listen to these albums you listen to the cds in your car the cassettes on the radio and it sounds amazing but when you actually get there and you you see it live and you hear it and you f you feel the kick drum in your chest it's just a it, it's I, listen i'm not gonna lie there was a, a tear of happiness came down when they played harvester <laughs> awesome. of sorrow it's a great show so if anybody's on the fence go see them it's worth yeah. it it's definitely worth it they put on a good show and they That's, they're yeah. still playing for two hours and 15 minutes uh, probably would go longer if you know they didn't have to get shut down by whatever jurisdiction they're in sure yeah so yeah definitely definitely I mean, a good show i guess am i are we missing anything else here or is that pretty much you it know there, there could be some things i overlooked and i'm sure they'll say them in the comments but uh it's it's a lot a lot of variations to remember so if i did gloss over something i do apologize but like i said you know shoot me a message we'll discuss anything for the yeah. people listening or you know but i think yeah. i think we pretty much covered it all i think i well, think we have I mean, let's just take a couple minutes here and so you have made four Three or four recreation kits. I, I've, I've made three. Uh, they're replicas. and Replica. I, I don't yeah, want to lead anybody in the wrong way. Lars did not play any of these. They are, <laughs> these are not his, but they are exactly what he used at the time, if if you understand what I'm saying. So, you know, yep. he used Grand Star Customs, so, so these are Grand Star Customs. I tried to keep everything 99% uh, – you know, period. Correct. I still do play them. They don't. They're not like museum pieces. So some things are changed. You know, me personally, I like EMAD two heads from Evans. That's yeah. just me. I play them all the time. So and and you know the minor yeah. symbols. So I, they're ninety nine percent correct. But you know, like you saw the shoes. I tried to get that right. The stick positions. The monkey. There's all kinds the spandex of spandex pants you the, wear. The span and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've tried. No, I, I've, I've tried to get it all all correct. So yeah, which is impressive, and you've gone to extreme detail, which is again what led me to you, is yeah. to Billy Harrington, recommending you for that. But which remind I us of the th yes, exactly. Remind us of the three that you have made. So I've uh, made I've made the uh, the Damage Incorporated uh, Chrome the uh, Mirror Chrome uh, mm -hmm. US kit. I've made that. That was the first one, and then I said, well, you know, I've always loved Grand Stars. So then I did the uh, Damage Justice Grand Star Custom, uh, the uh, Gun Smoke Blue. You know, that, that's my favorite one. And then I said, you know, since I've come this far, and another thing, when you build these kits, it's not like you can just go and buy an entire kit. So you, you have to piece it together. So, you know, uh, you know, Marketplace is a great place if anybody wants to build a kit. So I'm running all over, you know, the tri-state area, Pennsylvania, New York, Jersey, and you're piecing it together. Maybe some things, they pop up on eBay, you know, and you're piecing it together. So after these two kits were done, now I'm left with a, a bunch of rack toms, one kick drum, one floor tom. I said, you know what? I might as well go for it and build the uh, the Art Star 2, the white one. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I could wait here until another one pops up or I can just kind of just, you know, replicate it. Um, yeah. This is not an Art Star 2 because of costs. You know, what I would have to do is I would have to buy an Art Star 2, take all the hardware off of it buy a grand star take all the hardware off of it so essentially i'd have yeah. 18 you know 18 <laughs> pieces and then i'd have nine pieces i couldn't do anything with so because I, the art star two were s single right, lug right 
and the grand yeah. star is the split lug. You know, he he just, you know, he put his order in with Tama, yeah. and they're like, we'll make it to your specs, me. Yeah. And, uh, and you can't find this hardware alone. So it was kind of, it was kind of, it took me about five years. And like I said, it was a bucket list thing, and I just, just I just did it. And, and then it's a fun it, hobby. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. And like I said, I, I, I love talking about it. Um, if anybody wants to know anything, you know, shoot me a shoot me an email whatever direct message i'll help anybody out so yeah i just i love I, lo- I love all things tama and large you know as as you can see so sure so well i think you've done a great job thank you uh, i appreciate it really representing you know your passion for this and uh i mean and again people can comment below i'm sure there's things that they can be added but like yeah. this is the second time we've done it there were like with inter- with the amount of time, probably three and a half or four hours yeah. of, of recording, it's almost 10 o'clock at night and you wake up <laughs> for like 4.45 for yeah, work. Yeah. So, so I appreciate you giving no, me all your no time. No problem. And, and listen, if I over if I overlooked anything or got something wrong, it was definitely not, you know, purpose, uh, on purpose. You know, it's just like yeah. I said, it's a lot of changes and a lot of variations. So, and, and let me know. If you know something I don't, let me know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, and- and you've given me like 320 <laughs> photos organized by folders, which makes this YouTube version of this that much better. So yeah, uh, I, I hope I, I ho- no problem. I hope everybody enjoys it. Definitely. Yeah. So like yeah. I said, probably there was, was I was looking for something like this when I was doing these these kits, and even prior, you know, when I was a teenager, what is this guy using? What is he using? And there's nothing really out there that exists. There's some, yeah. but it glosses over really quick. So this is kind of like the first thing, and and yeah. I hope I hope people get a lot out of this, and I hope they enjoy it. So absolutely. Well, remind people where they can find you on like uh, Instagram or anywhere else to come and see what you've done. Right now, I'm, I'm only on Instagram, um, Chris R Z twenty eight at Instagram. And like I said, I got videos and pictures. Uh, I am flirting with doing the 72 seasons kit. I can't guarantee it, <laughs> but, uh, that would be cool. Yeah, that I, would be cool. What, what do you think that would be easier to do because of like the modernness of it? Or uh, yeah, you can, you can get a, you, you can buy, buy, you buy a star classic in, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. in, if not his exact yellow in the yellow they offer, that's close enough. So that would be easier. Yeah. So That'd be cool. just as expensive, but easier. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, so I'm, I'm active. I got pictures, videos of the kit and uh, I'm always around to answer questions. So you check me out there on Instagram and, uh, and, that, and that's pretty much it. So cool. Well, um, I appreciate everyone who has watched this. If you've made it all the way through <laughs> both parts, put a comment below and let us know, because I think that, uh, you know, it's cool when you watch almost four hours of, of, of content about a drummer. Yeah, and I think a definitely. lot of people do that. I know the Neil one, people watched what five and a half hours and were someone told me they watched that whole series three times, which that's like f- <laughs> 15 or 16 hours. Wow. So, uh, see if you can beat that with this and watch this <laughs> like four times. So, definitely. um, thanks to Billy Harrington for connecting us. Thanks, uh, Billy. And, and I, we got a little bit of info out there about his kit, which might lead to someone else coming out of the woodwork and just saying, I have more info about that. That would, uh, that would be interesting. That would be good. Definitely. Any, yeah, any information yeah. you can get would be cool. Like I said, if Tom is watching this, you know, give us, give us some uh, <laughs> ads yeah. or some paperwork, whatever you got in the vault. We don't need to know prices. We just want to see build sheets or anything. It's such yeah. an iconic kit, you know, give us some info. That would be really cool. So totally, totally. All right. Well, Chris, well, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing so much time and your knowledge. And I've had a great time doing this with you. It was uh, a pleasure. And thanks for inviting me. Thank you very much.